Welcome to the heart of KTM. We're in Matikov in Austria at the KTM Motor Hall building. We're here today to talk about the all new KTM 1290 Super Duke R, the Beast 3.0. And this is what the bike is all about. This bike is an absolute torque beast. It produces massive amounts of torque from low down in the RPM throughout the entire rev range, making it an amazing bike to ride on both track and street. This is the ultimate naked bike. This is a purpose-built naked bike from the ground up. It's not a stripped down super bike. And of course, all new chassis. Visually, you can see many changes to the new Super Duke. New frame, new styling, but there's much more than meets the eye. Joining us today is Head of Product Management, Adrian Sinker. Hi, good to be here. Adrian, what is a naked bike? If we could, it would only be an engine with two wheels. At KTM, we like to design according to a few principles, and one of them is purity. We remove everything that is not necessary. So this is the goal when designing and engineering motorcycles. For us at KTM, there's no point in developing a naked bike that can do massive amounts of speeds in a straight line. For us, it's all about the fun factor, taking the bike through tight corners and really enjoying what the bike is made for. Adrian, where shall we start? Let's start with the engine. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's the heart of the bike. You mentioned it, it's, it's the torque beast. Everything about the Super Duke starts with that massive V-twin engine. This is what defines the bike. This is the character of the bike. The pulsation and the power, and most of all, the torque. The figures, very impressive, 180 horsepower, 140 newton meters of torque. But it's not about the peak figures, because you can design an engine just to deliver a peak figure and really not perform very well everywhere else. Our focus was to make a very performing engine that delivers that torque and that power when you need it. If you look at the graph, you can see that we already developed well over 100 newton meters of torque at 3000 RPM. And we pull all the way through to the red line. So this makes the bike super rideable and it gives you a big advantage on the street and on the track. Adrian, you spent a lot of time riding the all new beast on the street. How do these figures translate into street riding? What I really like and what I really enjoy about, about the Super Duke and about this engine in particular is that it gives me the flexibility to ride. I don't have to be in exactly the right gear at exactly the right RPM to overtake. I'm free to ride how I want, when I want. It's a street, so there's always going to be traffic. So I'll be sitting behind the car and I have to overtake in a short time and I'm, I have the flexibility, I have the torque. I can open up and just overtake the car. And if I want to exit the corner, I have the torque and it's just that excitement. I can't always ride full speed on the street because it's, it's, it's not safe, it's not what it's about, but I'm, I can just have fun. I spent a lot of time on this new bike on the racetrack and again for me it was a bit of a learning curve. Spe the first couple of sessions out I did what uh, everyone would expect is to go down to second gear for the really tight corners. But because of the massive amount of torque I quickly realised as the sessions progressed that third gear would probably be the better gear. And the benefit there for me was really one less downshift going into the corner and obviously use the, the torque to drive it out the corner and again one less upshift coming out of the corner. So real benefit using the torque on both track and street. Big changes on the bike. There was a goal on weight saving. 15% on every part. Of course, it's not possible with every single part, but in the end, the goal was if we slice 15% off every part, the whole bike will become much lighter. So if we start with the heart of the engine, one of the parts that we looked at weight saving uh, was the engine casings. We shaved off on the inside of the engine casings unnecessary aluminium to save about 800 grams. And another big change is the change of the pivot point in the engine. It's five millimeters, but this has made a big change in how the motorcycle behaves in the end. One of the big changes on this bike is the new airbox. So let's have a look at that. We've increased the volume by 2.8 liters, so overall 10 liters of airbox size, but there's quite a lot of detail in this and just the airbox. One thing that's very obvious when looking at the bike is that the air intake is now in the middle of the LED headlight. This does two things. First of all, it combines two functions, something we like to do at KTM. So the incoming air also cools the LED elements. The second thing is by having the airbox, the air intake centralized, it gives us uh, almost a ram air function. If you have the air intakes on the side, the air can rush past and not all the air makes it into the airbox. Now it's in the middle, so you're always having the optimum air pressure inside the airbox. On top of that, we've now got the top feeder injectors inside the airbox, which allow the fuel air more time to mix, so we have an optimal fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber. Which is also why we have the very nice smooth power and torque curve. Let's move it on from here. As we said, 
The bike needs to breathe like a beast, and I think we've achieved that with the bigger airbox. It also needs to growl like a beast. So big change just on the manifolds and on the exhaust system itself. We've increased the diameters, 54 millimeter on the front header pipes and 60 millimeters at the back header pipe. But we've also included some hardware because the all new Super Duke is Euro 5 ready. What does that mean, Adrian? It means that all the hardware needed for the next step of uh, homologation in Europe is already on board. So we added uh, the second catalyzer. And of course, this adds weight. So our goal of reducing weight was very challenging on the exhaust side, but we still managed to reduce the weight of the exhaust, even with the additional hardware. So this is a very impressive feat by our engineers. So a total weight saving on the exhaust pipe of one kilogram, although we still added more hardware to the bike. We've introduced a new sensor in the bike, a 16 lean angle sensor. Just explain to us what's the benefit of having the sensor. KTM was the first company to have cornering ABS. Of course, we haven't stopped since we introduced it, so we're continually developing our ABS and our traction control systems. On the Super Duke now, we have what is called a 6D lean angle sensor. So what it does, it doesn't just measure side to side, front to back movement, but it also measures the yaw rate of the bike. And this allows us to control in much finer increments the way the traction control and the way the ABS functions. But you don't have to take my word for it, because we've taken our tame racing rider, XGP racer Jeremy McWilliams, asked him a couple of questions about is he happy with the final result and what are in his opinion the big changes to the bike. I'm pretty happy because I've been involved with the project right from the beginning. I think the, the biggest difference for me is that Everything on the bike's improved, so everything from suspension to traction control, cornering ABS. I think how the traction, the new logic on the traction works and gives the rider much more feeling. And uh, with the new lean angle sensor, I think we have a far better control uh, throttle to uh, rear tire. So I can't really fault the bike in any way. It's a, it's a wheelie machine, it's a bit of a hooligan when you turn everything off, but at least we have all the levels to keep everybody that doesn't want to necessarily wheelie safe and sound, the anti-wheelie mode, keep it on. Uh, it doesn't interfere with the, with the riding sensation. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You still get a little bit of a wheelie. For me, the, the, the change with the swinging arm, the, the linkage, the, the new chassis, actually all goes towards making the whole motorcycle a much more rounded bike than we've had before than the previous generation. always improving on our ABS and one of the things that we improved on was the feeling between the rider and the ABS system. Especially for me, Supermoto ABS was an eye opener on the racetrack. This allows me to brake really late. It also allows the rear wheel to pick up off the ground because it doesn't monitor the rear wheel speed. And of course, on a racetrack, this always happens from time to time, but yet I still had full ABS functionality on the front wheel for in case needed mid corner. Big talking point for us, obviously, is, as I mentioned, the new chassis. Frame is three times stiffer. We've achieved this partly by integrating the engine as a load-bearing part of the frame. Generally speaking, stiff chassis is associated with racetrack performance. But for us, since this is a street bike, it was super important to make sure that we kept this street riding character, that you have the flexibility to feel what the bike is doing on the street and to keep the control that you have on the street. I have to ask, is this an RC8 frame? No, it's not. In essence, there are some visual similarities to an RC8 frame, but it's a completely newly designed frame for the Super Duke. Of course, for us, another key update is moving from direct mount rear shock to the linkage at the rear. And this, again, combination between frame and rear shock really starts transforming this bike into an amazing machine. The shock is now connected to the swing arm with the linkage system. This allows us a lot more tuning on the progressivity on the suspension. It also allowed us to use a lighter weight spring because the spring rate is not so high as it would have to be on a direct mount. And it just gave the team a lot more possibilities to play around with different settings on the bike. We mentioned swing arm pivot point. It's been moved five millimeter higher in the engine casings. The swing arm itself is also 15% stiffer. Let's talk about squat and how that translates into riding. A lot of effort was made into reducing the squat on the Super Duke. What squat means is that if I accelerate, the bike tries to pull the swing arm up, the whole bike squats down in the suspension, and in an extreme case, this means that the front wheel can get light and 
I don't have the feeling that I want from the front wheel. So big focus of the team was to try and keep the drive out of corners. And this is done by increasing the angle of the swing arm so it's more in line with the driving force of the chain to give you more forward drive and less squat into the suspension. And obviously the benefit here is you can be on the accelerator and still hold your line without having to come off the accelerator. So a really, really big uh, key update here. As we mentioned, a lot of changes on the bike. In total, 90% of the bike is new. So again, let's look at another change on the bike. It might seem quite small, but on the triple clamps itself, we've made quite a big improvement as well. Saving 230 grams, and this was achieved by changing the steering tube is, is now an aluminium part. It used to be steel and now it's aluminium. We have also changed the offset slightly. So it's now 32 millimeters instead of 29 millimeters. Again, adding to the characteristics of the bike. So we've got the frame, we've got the swing arm, we've got the rear shock. Let's have a look at the front forks because again, big changes on the front fork. So 48 millimeter WP Apex front forks, split functionality, compression one side, the rebound on the other side. And for street and track, really good also have the option or possibility to change the preload so if you end up riding from home to the racetrack you can turn the preload up and again vice versa going back home. Larger cartridge so you have more damping volume so we can control the damping better. And I think this was really key for us also keeping the oil temperature low just by increasing the volume size for those avid track users you can also keep the heat as low as possible. Let's have a look at the wheels because again, also completely new. Give us a bit of an insight. I know there's a lot of computer generation that goes on, CADs drawing. The way the wheels are engineered is quite an interesting story because what we do is we feed the data into a computer that calculates the necessary material. So we want to have wheels of a certain stiffness, of a certain weight, of a certain strength. The computer tells us how much material we need in which positions. Once this is done, that's when the designers can use those components and those spaces to design the wheel around. So it's not a question of we design a nice looking wheel and then make it strong enough. First we look at exactly how light it can be for how strong it has to be and then we design it. Let's talk about the subframe. This is something that really excited you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a subframe is not one of the first highlights you talk about when you talk about a new motorcycle. In the case of the Super Duke, what we've done is really interesting. The first part of the subframe is cast aluminium. The second part, where the passenger could sit, is a carbon composite part. So it's not a plastic cover over a subframe. This is the actual subframe, what you see. So super exciting technology and helped us save a lot of weight off the entire motorcycle. So total weight saving on the subframe, 1.2 kilograms. All additional parts that need to be mounted to the motorcycle, like the number plate or the passenger foot pegs, mount directly to this carbon composite. There's no additional brackets needed. And I really like that. Adrian, our bike is starting to finally look like the complete package. Let's add some of the ergonomics and finish off this beautiful motorcycle. Position wise, we wanted to keep the characteristics of the Super Duke. Comfortable bike to ride, really upright. This motorcycle we have here today is dressed full in power parts, which is obviously available through your nearest dealer. But standard fitting is a lot of possibilities. I mean, we spoke about bar position. Obviously, something that I really like is foot peg position can be altered on the standard foot pegs. And for me that like to go to the track, you can also shift the gear selector from normal shift to race pattern by simply moving a bolt. No additional shafts or bits needed to do that. I mean, the presentation today is a bit on the short side, so we can't touch every single part of the bike as much as we like to. We could talk here the whole day. We have a new TFT display. We have brand new switches on the handlebars. We have this beautiful paint on the bike. I mean, there's so much to talk about, but yeah, we would say just go to your dealer and check the bike out. Just to recap, the all new KTM 1290 Super Duke R is a torque beast. It is the ultimate naked bike, and of course, it has an all new chassis. We suggest that you get to your nearest authorized KTM dealer to test ride the new beast or visit our website to book a test ride.